I'm Liv Pray Miranda on Instagram and Twitter and Pinterest, and uh, my blog is onelittleminuteblog.com. Um, so I, when I was about 12, I started singing and dancing with a performing group. I grew up here in Salt Lake, and um, I don't even know how, how we found out about it, but my little brother and I started going to Clayton Productions to learn how to sing and dance and perform. It was a local um, group of very high quality, and we did sort of cruise ship style medleys, um, a lot of Disney, a lot of Broadway, um, and that our instructor, his name was Kim, and he was literally a giant, like 6'10", I'm thinking, huge mammoth sized person with gray curls that were sort of like shorter on the sides than on the top, but you wouldn't like notice unless you looked very closely or at an angle. Um, he had a great booming voice, and the dance moves of like a Britney Spears backup dancer, um, which was pretty amazing. And something that he always told us as we were rehearsing and working on things with him was to imagine that there was energy inside of our bodies and that when we were performing that that energy needed to come out through our fingers and come out through our legs. And that, you know, this was, we were not just like singing on stage there. No, this was like big movements and everyone in the whole crowd needed to like feel all the energy coming from the stage. So, <laughs> so I did this. <laughs> um, I don't know, I can see energy coming from my fingers. I don't know, and from the sequin headband. Um, so I, I bought into this. Energy coming from inside of us, out. And, um, and then I grew up, went to college, I married the man of my dreams. He was a rugby player and decided to become a lawyer and I thought I'd continue loving him anyway. Um, I have two little boys and a baby girl who are just my world. And um, not in this order, I, I, I married my man and then I started my blog one little minute. Um, and then I had a couple kids and then I continued. I um, have a little shop where I sell PDF sewing patterns. I'm a custom seamstress and do um, sewing crafts and DIY and family lifestyle on my blog. Um, I also made this maternity countdown t-shirt that sells in my shop. Um, I teach local craft and sewing classes in Austin, Texas, uh, where I live now. And I've made it a personal mission to eat every wonderful hamburger that I come within you know, a few miles of. <laughs> so um, I went through all of these things and somehow I got a little bit, I, I lost the idea that there was energy inside and I got wrapped up in the idea that I was living in a world just where time was what mattered. Time mattered more, um, time management mattered a lot, um, making sure I was choosing the right things to do with my time. You know, time's kind of a big one, time and money, right? Like those are the things that matter and how are you gonna balance those things and how are you gonna make that all work? Um, I found though that I, on occasion, you know, I, I have tried to manage my time and I've read a lot and I've come to alt and I've learned some of the tricks and I've done some of the things and, um, and had a lot of success with a lot of, a lot of skills that I've been taught. But once in a while, I would, I would feel like I would get to the end of my, I would, I would have more time left, but I didn't have anything left inside me to give. I had run out of energy before I ran out of time. And that if I managed my time, that somehow, sometimes I still wasn't able to do all the things that I hoped for and wanted to do. Um, so there's a little bit of a conundrum here time and energy. Both are really important. I think we talk so much about time and we often forget that, um, that there's something else happening. So what is time? Time is external and it's finite, right? Time is not us. Time is our days, our minutes. It's outside of us. It's not something we can control. Whether we're doing something or not with it, it passes. And um, like Monique mentioned, once it's gone, it's gone. So it matters. It is important. Energy is, a dif is different though. Energy is inside of us. Like Kim taught me, we are filled with energy that can come out through our fingertips if we want it to, right? So it's inside of us and it's not finite. Our energy is renewable. And if we pay attention to that inside of us, we can generate more. We also can run out, but we're, once we're out, we're not out forever, but it doesn't feel good to be out. When you're out, you can kind of, you know, you can, um, you can be down for a little while. So um, an important, thing is though, when we run out of energy, we can have all the time in the world and it doesn't matter anymore, it's useless. Time without energy is worthless. 
So as we're approaching the idea of being efficient and effective and happy with the things that we do in our lives, both of these things need to be managed and balanced. So pretend you have 60 minutes until a deadline, something you've been working on, whether it's personal or professional. You have 60 more minutes and you're tired. You've already been working on this thing, you're kind of burned out. What does time management tell you to do? Lean in. You have 60 more minutes, you get that thing done, you nail it to the wall, you get your email sent, and guess how you feel at the end of that? Or in the middle of it, maybe. Time management takes into account what you do, but not how you feel. If you're considering both your time and your energy, you might, if you're feeling tired, you have 60 minutes left, you might say, I'm gonna take a break. It doesn't make sense. I have 60 minutes left, but I'm gonna stop here because I don't feel okay. I'm gonna step away, focus on something else for a little while, and when I come back to it, maybe in five minutes, maybe in 15 minutes, I'm gonna be so much more efficient, so much more creative, so much more excited, that the work that I produce will be better than if I had spent the whole amount of time on it. And that's, that's proven to be right. That's the way that our brains and our bodies work. We have to believe in it though, and we have to do it. You talked about the Pomodoro method. That's where this comes from. You don't just do, 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 do all the time. You have to step away. And in the things that I've read, it doesn't matter as much how much time you spend away, but the quality of it. So it might be better for you to spend five minutes outside, totally separate from your office or from your workspace, than to spend 15 minutes hanging out in the hallway outside your office, you know, checking your phone making quality um, breaks to renew and recharge rather than having longer ones where you're kind of just, you're not actually renewing yourself. You're just you know, taking a quick step away. So um, this is the handout that you have. We're gonna start with a personal energy profile. And there's just some basic questions on here. They may not seem like, I mean, they're not. This is not revolutionary. Um, but you know yourself best. The reason that it's a personal energy profile is because this will be totally different for all of us. And it's something, that's something important to remember as we're, I mean, and we talk about this a lot, I think, in our community as bloggers and creatives, um, that you can't, we're not apples and apples. As much as it might seem like it, because we like to do a lot of the same things sometimes, or we like to come to the same events, or we all like each other's shoes, um, we're so individual, and, and nowhere is that more apparent to me than in the level of energy that we carry and the things that ignite and deplete our energy. So um, we're just going to go quickly through these. You can go ahead and fill this out. Um, I'm going to talk and, you know, if you want to wait and fill it out later, but I'm going to go through each of these questions as you kind of work on them. So when you have a free day, would you rather hit your to-do list or use it to relax? This will kind of tell you a little bit about some of your natural energy profile. Are you a high energy person by genetics? Or are you a more chill, lower energy person by genetics? Um, I tend to be a doer which is great a lot of the time, and sometimes it isn't because I totally overschedule myself because I get so excited about doing all of these things and I crash and burn. I wear myself out because I naturally want to be accomplishing sub something all the time. So I have, I have to pay special attention to how I'm feeling and how much energy I'm spending on what I'm doing to make sure that, I, that I'm able to control, my, control myself. I have to control myself. Um, when you're, during the day do you feel the most productive? Are you a morning person or a night person? Do you feel ready to take on the world before lunch? Or do you love those hours after you put your, if you have kids, you put your kids to bed or you put your dog to bed and the house is quiet and the TV's off and you just like, ah, it's like me time, you know? I think I used to be more of a morning person than I am now. I remember in college um, waking up to study for a, an exam like at five because I felt like those fresh hours of the morning are when my brain works best. And then I had kids and I think now I'm like a nine to five. Like mornings are bad, nights are bad. Like I'm tired at the beginning and the end. Like in the middle after a Diet Coke, I'm usually okay for a while. So um, <laughs> I have to pay closer attention. And I think this changes with the seasons of your life too, it may. Um, but that gives you kind of, you know, think about your energy, how you feel. If you could choose a few hours of the day in which you have the most energy, when would that be for you? Um, I kind of like nine to 11. I mean, it's not every day is exactly the same, but I feel like once I'm up, I've got my kids out the door, it's light outside, that makes a big difference for me and how I feel, and um, I haven't really gotten into the everything else. It's like, okay, I've got some, you know, I'm feeling good right then. After lunch, terrible for me, I just wanna sleep. Um, so, you just have to consider these things. Um, okay, those are some of your natural energy profiles, and we'll go into that more, but think about the last time you were extremely happy and 
what it was that you were doing. What are some other times that you can reflect on that you've been extremely happy, blissful, you know that like zone, the flow, when like everything seems to be going right? Isn't that like the best feeling? What is it that you're doing when you feel that? Isn't that the most like energy building, wonderful place to be? Why are we doing that more? What, if, what are those things and how do we work those in? Those are the things that are gonna build your energy and recharge you when you're feeling down. What are some things that you do regularly that make you feel immediately tired or overwhelmed or unhappy? Those are gonna be some of your energy drains. And some of these are not things we can avoid. Some of these are things that have, you know, are kind of duty. We, for whatever reason, um, need to do, I mean, we have to do some things that we don't like, right? That's just life. Um, but we'll talk about maybe how to work with those in a way that they don't feel so heavy all the time, okay? So there's kind of an old, it's actually, a, I don't know how old it is, but it's very widely accepted time management. Um, what is it called when you do something like in, anyway? Like a parable? Something like that. Let's go with parable. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so it says you have like that your life is a big jar and that you have big rocks and medium rocks and little rocks. And these are things import as in level of importance. So the most important things are your big rocks and the most, and like sort of the medium important things are medium sized rocks and then you got all the sand. And that's, I mean, there's like a TED talk about this. It's like a Stephen Covey thing. Like um, it's pretty widely recognized. Um, and so what you do is if you try to put everything in willy nilly, it like doesn't work. It doesn't fit in the jar. But if you put the big rocks in first, and then the medium rocks in, and then pour the sand on the top, the sand like filters in to everywhere, and you and your life is perfect. Like you've done the big things, and then you've done the medium things, and then like the other stuff just fits, and you're like, yay, uh -huh. I got it all. Well, I feel like this doesn't work for me, because I don't feel like I have one big jar. I feel like my life looks more like this. I can't just put the big things in first, because sometimes I don't feel like doing the big things first. I have to find the places where my priorities and projects fit into my energy profile, into my days and weeks, and that's where they'll fit. That's where they feel right. Um, rather than banging my head against the wall to try to get this stuff done in the, in the times and seasons that it doesn't feel like it works for me. Um, so maybe that helps you start thinking about yourself in terms of energy. Um, we know our when we know our natural energy rhythms, we can start to match our schedule to our energy profile, creating some more harmony in the, in the do and feels of our day. Does this like ring true for anyone? Does this feel like something that, yeah, right? Me too. So um, I want to talk briefly about our golden energy hours. On the questionnaire, I asked you which were a couple hours that you feel like that you have the most energy in the day. Those are going to be your golden energy hours. I just made this up because of the golden um, hours of like photography. You know, if you're a photographer, there's like this time of day when the sun's setting and it's like everything becomes magically beautiful and that's when you want to take your pictures. I'm not a professional photographer, but I know this from friends who are, <laughs> <laughs> they tell me this. Um, so your golden energy hours are the hours when you personally feel the highest energy during your day. You don't want to use those hours doing silly things. Though that's the time of day when you want to be the most creative when you wanna do the hard stuff, make hard decisions and have hard conversations. And like I clean my floors on Thursdays during my golden energy hours because I don't wanna do it any other time. So that's when I'm like, I can do it because I have the energy to do it. So think about those and be, be thoughtful about when you do the things that you do and the most important because you'll feel so much better. You may be doing all of the same things, but switching it around in a way that it feels better. And that's important to feel to feel better to feel happy. Oh, good, it worked. <coughs> my gif wasn't working up on my computer, but it's working here. So um, I came to all for the first time two years ago, and I uh, heard Stefan Sagmeister, who's a brilliant uh, designer, give a talk about happiness. And one of the things that I pulled from his talk—I mean, this is like, of course, do more of what you like. But it, I, it was like a light bulb moment for me do more of what I like. You mean I can do like the things that I like more? I can do more things that I like? Like I, I think I, my life had filled up with the shoulds and my life had filled up with the what is she doing? I think I maybe am supposed to do that. 
and my life had filled up with the opportunities, even good opportunities that I felt like I should take, were taught sometimes to say yes to things that are good opportunities, even if they don't feel like they're right for us. And even if it doesn't feel like it's where I want to go, if it's a good opportunity, we should say yes, because we might not get another one. So I was doing a lot of things that I didn't really like to do, and I wasn't doing enough things that I do like to do. So do more of what you like. These are the things that are gonna build your energy, and we're gonna make time and um, space for them in your life, because you need to recharge your energy. Um, along with this, I think this one, you're like, okay, yeah, of course, do more of what I like. But what about this? Can you do less of what you don't like? I think you can. I think we could find a way to make that happen. Um, there might be things that you're doing, like I was, that you, you're doing because you think you should do them. You're doing because someone else likes doing them and you like that person. And so it seems like the right thing to do. Or because it's really important to someone else. Um, so just take some time to think about what you're doing, where you're spending your energy, and, um, and if there's places that you can make some changes, even small changes. Even just like eating one more good hamburger a week that you like really love. That could build your energy, that could make you feel better. So now I want to give you three tips for energy management. Um, I'm going to go through them quickly on this slide and then we'll go into more detail. So one of them is to automate routine tasks. I don't mean hire a robot. We're going to talk about how you can automate them yourself. Um, eliminate unnecessary decisions. This one is huge and has made like a big, big impact on my life. And also schedule, schedule regular recharge. These are all things that are going to um, help you be thinking about your energy on a regular basis. So we'll start with automate tasks. There are things that we all do that we need to do. They're called unimportant necessities. Um, for example, we need to have relatively clean houses. We need to eat. Or if you have children, you need your children to eat. Um, I mean, maybe. You should, probably. Um, we need to answer emails. Um, or at least go through the emails. At least look at them and decide if you're going to delete them or not. Um, same thing with social media, same thing with writing blog posts or creating projects. There's like aspects of life that are just routine. You have to do them all the time. Um, but they can, they can feel a little bit heavy. Um, so for me, and I think, so the advice I have is to give these things a very specific place in your schedule and then not think about them any other time. So do you know anyone, have you ever heard someone say, I feel like the laundry is endless? Have you ever heard that? Or do you feel like that yourself? Like it's never ending and you're like, I wish we could all just sit around naked for like 30 minutes so all the laundry in the whole house could be clean at one time. <laughs> just for, I mean, that would be weird. But like, then it'd be, then it'd be done. You could say it's done for right this second. And then we'll put our clothes on and now it's not done anymore, but you know. Um, those are the types of things that feel heavy because you're thinking about them all the time. It doesn't actually take that much time or energy to do the laundry. It doesn't. I mean, it takes a couple hours. But when you think about it all the time, it feels heavy. It feels like you're giving so much more emotional energy to that task than it actually deserves or than it needs. So when you take, you take those things and what feels heavy for you will be different than what feels heavy for me. Maybe, maybe, you don't, maybe the laundry doesn't bother you. Maybe your emails feel more heavy. Or maybe your grocery shopping feels heavy and you're like, oh, we're out of milk again. Like, how does that happen? Stop drinking the milk, you know? The things that feel heavy are the things that you want to find a very specific place for in your life and then give yourself permission to not think about it again. I think about my floors on Thursday afternoon during nap time. That is the only time that I think about my floors. And I believe me, they are dirty for the rest of the week. I have three young kids. I clean my floors. I vacuum and mop them. They come home from school and they're dirty like within a half hour of cleaning them. But I, I, know, I know that I've done it. I'm maintaining them, I'm taking care of them, and they're dirty the rest of the week and that's fine and I don't worry about it. They're dirty. I'll clean them on Thursday. I mean, unless maybe like step in something very sticky, I might like, you know, take a second to just like wipe that up. But for the most part, I do that once a week. My laundry, I do on Mondays and Fridays. I do loads during the day. I, don't, I pull it straight out of the dryer and I stick it in a basket and it piles up, it's like over my head at night. But then, I'm super low energy at night, like I'm, I don't want to do anything really important then. So that's a perfect time, Monday and Friday nights, I get to sit on the couch, 
eat chips and queso because I live in Austin and that's what we eat. I fold laundry and I watch The Mindy Project or I watch The Midwife. Call The Midwife. I'm, um, it's something I can totally feel like I'm vegging out, but I'm actually doing something that I don't totally love. I do it on Mondays and Fridays and I don't think about it the rest of the week. So if you can think about when you can do some of these unimportant necessities, maybe you only email once per day. You have an hour that you're gonna do your emails and that's it and then you don't worry about it. If you get an email that comes in later that day, you'll get it tomorrow. Give yourself permission to let go of some of the things that feel heavy. Eliminate unnecessary decisions. This is a really big one. Um, have you guys, ever walked into Bed Bath & Beyond for something and not even been able to like get, like it takes you an hour to get to that thing. First of all, because you have no idea where it is, because the store is like huge. And second of all, because there's five million things to look at and you don't even know going in that you're gonna have to make a decision like every three feet about like, oh, I didn't, I've never seen that before. Do I even need one of those? Like what is that, how does it work? And should I bring it home with me? And I don't know, and then you see something else. And when we were um, just married, we got some gift cards to Bed Bath & Beyond, and after about two visits, my husband said, I am not letting you go in there anymore, because I could not focus, and I'm generally pretty decisive, but I would be so overwhelmed by the quantity of options that surrounded me that I was unable to get anything really done, and I would just leave feeling like, oh, I have no idea what I just did. So that's how life is now, because of things like social media, because of Pinterest, like you can go on looking for something and come out three hours later, like not even having gotten there, like you don't even know. Um, our minds actually experience something called decision fatigue. We can only handle, I mean, as humans, we can only handle a certain amount of decisions um, in a day before we start to actually lose some of our ability to make good decisions. We lose some of our self-control. You've all felt that when you have a decision and you're like, I mean, it's not even an important decision sometimes, like where are we gonna go eat dinner? Or like, what am I gonna order at Cheesecake Factory? And you're like, mine just, blows up, like you don't even know where to start because you feel so unable to make this decision, probably because you've made too many that day about maybe other unimportant things. So something that I do to save some of my energy is to eliminate unnecessary decisions. Not everything in our lives is important. So the things that aren't that important to you, and this will, again, it will be very personal. The things that aren't very important to you, it doesn't really matter what you decide. Um, I actually love food, like love, love food. I love cooking, I love eating out. But I got so tired of thinking about what to make for dinner that I went to an extreme with this and I created what I call a, a minimalist meal plan. And my family eats the same, as a baseline, I have the same seven meals Monday through Sunday every week. I always have the groceries for them. My groceries are about, I buy about the same thing every week. Um, Mondays we have spaghetti and meatballs, Tuesday we have bacon, egg, and cheese tacos, Wednesday we have stir fry with rice. This is just, I mean, I started this a few months ago and it has just, I get to five o'clock and I don't ask myself what's for dinner because I know what's for dinner. I know that I have everything I need to make it in my refrigerator. And if I feel like I have a little more energy, because I do, I love to cook, but I don't love to cook at 5 p.m. when I have three kids like wrestling at my feet and you know, like that's not fun. That's energy draining. That's not energy building. And so I eliminated that decision from my life. What I have for dinner? I don't ask myself that because I already know. Because I decided it. Um, and it's not boring, surprisingly. And my son, who's six, is genuinely surprised every Monday when we're having spaghetti with meatballs again. <laughs> like, you miss spaghetti with meatballs, mom? He even will say, Mom, thank you so much. You're the best mom. It's his favorite meal. <laughs> and I'm like, we had this last week and the week before and the week before. And like he just he doesn't even so I mean it does not matter to him. I mean it matters to him and that he loves it, but he obviously doesn't matter that we're not eating it every week. It's like the best thing in the world, you know? <laughs> so instead of feeling like a bad mom that I've like taken away all of these culinary choices from my children at such a young age, you know, I mean <laughs> this is gonna change as we grow and our family changes and the season of my life changes. Um, but like right now, I feel like super mom because we're having dinner every night. It's super easy for me. I'm not. Use, I'm cooking things that my kids love. They're easy for me to make. I mean, and your meal plan may look super different from mine, and maybe that's not even an issue for you. Maybe it, it, that doesn't even matter for you. So you want to choose something else to eliminate as your unnecessary decisions. But it's been hugely successful in my household. Um, another thing about decisions, just another example. All of these again, you'll have your own. But. Um, 
like to look cute and comfortable, but I don't care that much about clothes. I'm not a fashion blogger. Um, I don't really like shopping very much. And for years and years I've done this. I've done shopping and I've like agonized over what outfits to wear because that's what people do, right? That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to like stand in your closet and like, I don't know what to wear. Like, what should I, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> so I did that, I've done that. And I decided in the fall, like, I, no more. No more, I'm taking back my energy from deciding what to wear because I don't actually care that much what I wear. So I eliminated most of my wardrobe. Um, it started with a thing called the wardrobe capsule made popular by Caroline Joy, who's an Austinite and she's super rad. Um, and so I followed her plan and I like eliminated most of my clothes and I have about 40 things that I wear on tight rotation. And I like don't care if you see the same shirt in an Instagram picture like every four days because I'm actually wearing that shirt every four days because I like it and it looks cute and I don't care that much. So that's not very important to me. So I don't think about it and it's like, it's eliminated so much energy drain from my life, like standing there thinking, what am I gonna wear or, you know? So choose the things that don't matter and just get rid of them. Um, Voltaire, I, you know, says that, the, the, that perfect is the enemy of the good. You don't always have to be searching for the exact right thing. You don't always have to have, I mean, it, the perfect is not always gonna be there. So when you find something you like or you find something that fits, if, if you don't care that much, then okay, go with it. And you'll, you'll save so much energy from not, not agonizing. Um, okay, and then the last one of these is really important, to schedule regular recharge. Have you all seen this before? Does this look familiar to you? <laughs> what do you do when you see this? <laughs> what, what do you do? You plug it in, right? Like immediately. Um, I was joking with, well, not joking, because I'm serious. I feel pretty uncomfortable if my phone's under 60%. Like when it's at 60, I'm like looking and I'm like, I probably should find an outlet soon. Because like, it goes from 60 to zero very quickly. So, you know, like in three days probably. But I've been driving before. I've been out, like I've left my house and for some reason had forgotten to charge my phone the night before. And I get this reminder and I pulled over to a Walgreens and I bought a car charger because I mean I was gonna be on for like six hours, but I, I could not imagine having my phone be like be gone. And so I pulled over and I stopped and I went into a store and I bought a car charger and I plugged my phone in because that was that important to me that my phone had energy. How would it be if we had this type of a reminder? What would that look like for you? I, I would bet that each of us has our own 20% um, notification. What's that reminder for you? When you're feeling low energy, when you're feeling drained, how does your body tell you that? How does your mind tell you that? And what are you going to do about it? Um, my husband and I have, have decided that, I mean, we've kind of discovered, I guess, that one of mine is that when I'm feeling pretty low energy, even if I'm not like cognitively aware of how I feel, I do these big deep sighs. Like I'll be working on something and just like, <sighs> he's like, is that a sigh? Like, yeah, I'm just, I'm okay. <sighs> Probably need to just like go take care of yourself, you know, like I need to get, you know, I need to go on a run or this means I need, I need some space. I need some time to recharge my battery because I'm feeling low. And so, like I said earlier, that can be something as quick as five minutes that's very conscious and focused. Um, for me, being outside is huge. Like I feel like I'm solar powered. So like when the sun is out, if I can spend five minutes outside laying on the grass, since I started kind of exploring this for myself, I've spent more time laying on the trampoline in my backyard, like looking at the clouds. That's something I hadn't done since I was little, but it feels so good. And it's just like, just a moment. I can take a moment and be in that moment and nowhere else. Being mindful of what's happening with myself and around me is huge to recharging your own battery. We spend a lot of energy kind of out the back door worrying about things that are happening that we can't do anything about. So spend some time, you know, bring that in. Um, I also schedule, I, I do this, I schedule regular recharge apart from when I just feel low energy um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays is when I have some free time. And um, my, my boys were in school and my daughter was 
with napping. And so those two nap times, Tuesday and Thursday nap, no, sorry, Tuesday and Friday. Thursday, what do I do on Thursday? I clean my floors. <laughs> Tuesday and Friday nap times were, um, school just ended, but I, okay, so during the school year, that's when I spent my time recharging. And recharge for me means un, like uninterrupted focus on creative activities. So I would sew, I would pattern design, uh, and that's when I would do some for fun photography. Sometimes I would read, kick up my feet on the couch, spend some time just recharging my own battery, just so that I could feel, feel good. Now school ended, and I spent a couple weeks kind of thinking, what on earth am I gonna do? Because I feel, I need that, I feel so much better. And I hired a babysitter. And I um, don't make a ton of money blogging, but I make enough to cover my babysitter. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm taking care of myself on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm gonna have this recharge time because I need it. I need it to feel like a better person, um, to be a better mom, to be a more creative individual. So I'm taking it. What does recharge look like for you? Here's a bunch of ideas. Um, physical recharge will be exercise, nutrition, and sleep. These are all things we know, right? But maybe there's some that you can work on. Um, mental recharge, just like Unique said, multitasking is so bad for us. You spend the same amount of energy that you would doing it in twice the amount of time, but you spend it all at once and then you're just drained. So just focus on what you're doing and be mindful of those needs. Emotional energy, taking deep breaths, honestly, like there's studies about how, I mean, that's the most simple thing, but like just taking a few deep breaths can rebuild your emotional energy and um, connecting. I feel like the easiest way that I have to connect is by just connecting on my phone. When I unplug, when I sign out of Instagram, when I um, just put it away for just even a few minutes um, and can, you know, get down on eye level with my kids and ask how their day went, um, or go over to the neighbor's house, or like, you know, she's always like doing her garden and giving me advice about how to do mine, <laughs> um, which I don't actually do. Um, but, but connecting and then creating for me, and maybe for a lot of, we're a, lot, a lot of us are creative, so creating is a way that I build my emotional energy. And then spiritually, um, we have spiritual energy too, making sure that the decisions that you're making in your life align with your core values. Are you doing things that feel like they're the right fit for you? And if they are, you'll probably feel better than if you're making decisions that don't. Let's go ahead again. Um, okay, so this is the end. So um, balance is achieved. I had, you know Melissa Esplin? Anyway, she's awesome. Melissa Furr is her Instagram. But she's a calligrapher and one of my best friends. And I had her letter this morning. Balance is achieved when you decide which things you want and willingly dispose of the rest. This is available also as a free download if you if it resonates with you and you'd like to print it. It's available right now on my website. You can download it for free and, and print it. Um, but I love the idea of deciding. It's up to us to choose what things we want and what things we don't, and um, and to make that happen in our own life. We as we learn to better manage our energy, we'll feel this abundance and we'll be able to um, support and care for ourselves as well as the people around us. So. Um, that's the end. I think I might not have time for questions, but please come and talk to me after if you have a question. Um, and yeah, this is where everything is. So, thank you.